Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. We begin with Allah's blessed name. We praise Him and we glorify Him as He ought to be praised and glorified. And we pray for peace and for blessings on all His noble messengers, and in particular on the last of them all, the blessed Prophet Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. We greet you from the studios of the Islamic Broadcasting Network here in our native island of Trinidad, in the Caribbean. Wherever you are, we tell assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Peace be unto you. It is today the third day of the blessed month of Shaban, and we make dua, Allahumma barik lana fi Shaban, O Allah kindly grant us blessings in Shaban wa baligna Ramadan and grant that we may live to see the blessed month of Ramadan. Uh, last night I lectured at the Hermitage Masjid uh, in South Trinidad on the Isra and Miraj. So if I look a little sleepy now, you know why. And uh, uh, one week ago I lectured on Isra and Miraj at the Barakpo Islamic Center. But so far, we've not been able to get the recording of that lecture. So what I'm going to do today <laughs> is to re deliver the lecture on Isra and Miraj for you. There is no other alternative for me until I can get recording equipment for myself and do the recordings wherever I go myself and then have them placed on the Internet for you wherever you are in the world. Uh, but before we begin today's program, let me uh, inform you that I do have another public lecture coming up. And I want you to come. It's beautiful Santa Cruz. In beautiful Santa Cruz in the north of Trinidad, at the Masjid in Santa Cruz. Today is the 3rd of Shaban, so three weeks from now. The 3rd, the 10th, the 17th and the 24th of Shaban, which is the last Yawm uh, al-Ahad, um, or Sunday, they call it Sunday, but Yawm al-Ahad, in the month of Shaban, corresponding to the 21st of, April, of May, 21st of May, at uh, uh, 10 o'clock in the morning uh, in the Santa Cruz Masjid, and uh, we hope we can cook a nice uh, pilau and we'll have lunch after the lecture. The topic will be the strategic uh, significance of the fast of Ramadan. And I'd love to see you there. I love Santa Cruz. I used to be the imam in that masjid once upon a time. And I'm returning to Santa Cruz after many years. So uh, do please come and come with your families so we can spend that morning together, inshallah, on the 21st of May. Uh, Yawm al-Ahad or Sunday at 10 o'clock in the morning. Let us now turn to Isra and Miraj. Nahmaduhu wa nusalli ala rasulihi al-kareem. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan al-rajim. Bismillahi rahman rahim ونزلنا عليك الكتاب تبيانا لكل شيء وهدى ورحمة وبشرى للمسلمين. سورة النحل of the Quran and you're very familiar with that ayah because I constantly recite it. And we have sent down the book, sent down the Quran, sent it down to thee, O Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم, in order that this book might explain all things. That this book might explain the strange and mysterious world in which we live today, in which uh, paper money is disappearing. Paper money is disappearing. And soon there'll be no paper money. This is a hundred dollar Trinidad and Tobago money. It's not going to last for long, I tell you that. Your government is going to betray, betray you and I and they will demonetize the $100 Trinidad and Tobago note. You can use it as wallpaper, and maybe the $50 note as well. We live in strange and mysterious times. What's happening in the world of money? This Quran explains all things, and if you do not go to the Quran, well, 
that is going to be a terrible thing. And in this Quran, there is guidance. And that guidance and that explanation has come from Allah as rahmah. Excuse me. And for those who go to the Quran to study it and get the guidance and get the explanation and follow it, bushra lahum, good news and glad tidings for them. They will understand what others will not, but they will succeed when others will not. So if we want to study the subject of Isra and Miraj, we go to the Quran. That's where we go. Isra and Miraj, of course, referred to the miraculous journey of our Prophet ﷺ when he traveled by night from this masjid, not from this city to another city, no. From this masjid, Masjid Al-Haram or the Kaaba in Mecca, to that masjid, a distant one, it's called Masjid Al-Aqsa, meaning a distant masjid, the one built by uh, Suleiman alayhi salam. Hmm? This journey is called the Isra and Miraj. And Allah says that he took him there to teach him, to explain to him, to give to him the knowledge of some of the signs of Allah. And then Allah's messenger led a salat in which all the prophets of Allah were present. And having led that salat, then he was taken up into the samawat. Uh, I don't know any other word to use, but uh, for this, this dunya is the universe, uh, material universe. And the samawat will be the other universes, we may call them the parallel universes, beside this material universe. There were seven of them. Allah took him up into the samawat and then took him to the highest sama of all. And there he, said, he, 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 he met the prophets again in each sama that he met. Uh, and he led the salat in Masjid al-Aqsa. And uh, at the highest sama, Allah took him, Jibra'il al-Islam took him to a tree. A tree, yes. Uh, Sidratul Muntaha, a lot tree. A mango tree has leaves so small. But a low tree has big leaves so that it gives excellent shade. That's why it is prized in the desert when the sun is very hot. So this is a low tree with big leaves. And uh, the tree is shrouded with what it is shrouded. And he is gazing at the tree. And while gazing at the tree, Allah says, his heart did not reject what he saw. His heart did not reject what he saw. And Allah says, Ma zag al basar. And his gaze did not waver. His gaze did not tire. With what is he seeing? He's seeing with something other than these eyes. Seeing with the heart. That's right. The modern world of Dajjal declares that knowledge comes only from external observation and experimentation and, science and rational inquiry. They call that the scientific method. And that is the only way that you can acquire knowledge. Knowledge that comes from any source other than this is fit for Disneyland. That is what the universities say. And I know it very well because I've attended about four or five universities in my life. Yeah. But the Quran says something else. The Quran says that whosoever is blind in this world we'd be blind in the next as well. It couldn't be talking about someone who's lost his eyesight in an accident, for example. No, you've got to be a schoolboy to believe that. He's talking about some other kind of sight. Whosoever is blind in this world will be blind in the next world as well. So what sight is he talking, the Quran talking about? Allah says, 
For in the hell that I'm a lobster. No, it's not these eyes which are blind. Well, I can tell my colleague, but let's face it, so do what is blind is the heart which is inside the chest. So the university says this is their epistemology. The knowledge is only acquired externally. And the Quran gives another epistemology that in addition addition to externally acquired knowledge, knowledge can also be bestowed internally. Let me repeat that. Our epistemology, which differs from Dajjal's epistemology, which is taught in all the universities, that in addition to knowledge which is externally acquired, the Quran gives an epistemology in which knowledge can also be internally received. So in addition to our external eyes, the heart can also see. We have internal sight. And it is with internal sight that Nabi Muhammad is looking at the tree. And Allah says, مَا زَاقَ الْبَصَرُ وَمَا تَغَى his sight, meaning his internal sight, never wavered. No, he never tired. And uh, it is in Surah Al-Isra of the Quran, the first verse of Surah Al-Isra of the Quran, that Allah speaks to us about this journey. He came back from the journey But while looking at the tree, Allah said something more. Remember, the purpose of this journey is to teach him, to provide to him knowledge of some of our signs. But when he is looking at the tree, Allah says, He saw the greatest, the greatest, the greatest of the signs of Allah. When Musa alayhi salam was sent to Pharaoh, to Pharaoh, Allah sent him with the greatest signs of that time. He put, he threw his rod on the ground and became a snake, a serpent. And that was the greatest of the signs at that time. And then Allah told him, put your hand underneath your arm. And it came out bright and shining without any defect. These were the greatest of the signs at that time. But now, the greatest of the signs, thousands of years later, when Nabi Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam is making the journey, the miraculous journey, Allah shows him the greatest of the signs of Allah. لَقَدْ رَأَى مِنْ آيَاتِ رَبِّهِ الْكُبْرَى So let us now, he came back from the Isra and Miraj, and then he informed the people about his journey, his miraculous journey. So let us now, if you want to study this subject, the place you have to start is in the Quran. But if you want to use the Quran to study anything, you have to use proper methodology. This is why I wrote this book, Methodology for Study of the Quran. Uh, some people have been. Uh, buying the book and giving it free of charge uh, to those who are unable to buy the the book. They're too poor for it. So uh, it's given as sadaqah. And we we gave some uh, last night in in Hermitage. But if you would like to buy the book, uh, do please send me an email. You'll find my email address at the bottom of the screen. Or you can call on the telephone to IBN and they will give you my telephone number. Um, we, if you have to study the Quran, remember you, you need to use proper methodology. There is a schoolboy way of studying the Quran, short pants way, and then there's a proper way. Uh, remember when Allah, no, my students are familiar with this, so they're going to say, Sheikh, we've already heard this a hundred thousand times, but please bear with me because there are others who don't, who don't know about it. So please bear with me. When Allah spoke at the beginning of the Quran, at the very beginning, he taught us how to study the Quran. He said that he ordered the angels to make sijda, to prostrate before Adam, alayhi salam. 
fasajadu illa iblis. And they all made sijda. They all prostrated except someone named iblis. If we use the schoolboy methodology, not the one that is to be used, the proper one, if we use the schoolboy school methodology, we'll say, well, eh, the angels were ordered to bow, make pro sijda, to prostrate. And they all did accept this one, so he has to be an angel. Well, when I was a teenager, I came to the same conclusion because I was still a schoolboy. Hmm? But when you use proper methodology, don't take a single verse in isolation. Don't study the Quran piecemeal. No, don't break it up into little pieces and so on. But take the whole book and study the whole book properly. Then when you go to the other parts of the Quran, then we find about the angels that Allah says, وَيَفْعَلُونَ مَا يُؤْمَرُونَ That they, they obey Allah. They do whatever they are ordered to do. So an angel cannot refuse. An angel cannot reject. An angel must obey. Must obey. But he disobeyed. He refused to prostrate. So he couldn't be an angel. No. This is what happens when you study the whole Quran. And then when we go to Surah Tul Kaf, then Allah says, Wa kana min al jinn. No, he was not an angel, he was a jinn. The reason why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has framed this statement the way he did, that they all prostrated except Iblis, is to teach you a lesson how to study the Quran. Don't take any verse of the Quran in isolation. Rather, don't take anything standalone. Rather, go to the whole book. When you go to the whole book, then the less, less likelihood that you'll make the mistake of saying Iblis was an angel and became a fallen angel. But there's more to the study of the Quran than simply going to the whole book. You have to know how to connect the whole book. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us about the stars in the sky. And my teacher, Mawana Fadlur Rahman Ansari, Rahimahullah, taught me this lesson once upon a time. If you look up at the stars in the sky as a schoolboy, you say, oh, it's very pretty. The, the starlight is very pretty when you look up at the sky, the canopy of the sky. But if you're on a ship in the ocean and you need to know which direction the ship must go, you need to navigate. You have to look at the sky. You have to look at the stars, and the stars will tell you which direction to go because the stars are interconnected, and if you know how they are interconnected, you have the big picture up there. Then the navigator will be able to say, this is direction in which we have to travel. The verses of the Quran are like that. You have to know how the verses of the Quran are interconnected. You can look up at the stars and see where they are. But to know how to interconnect the verses of the Quran, you need more than the rational faculty. And so when Allah speaks about Isra and Miraj, he ends the verse by saying, Innahu Sami al Basir. Surely he, Allah, is the one who hears and the one who sees. Basar is not only external sight, Basar is internal sight. And Allah's Messenger, La Mamazag al Basar, his gaze did not waver, it did not tire. So, in order to understand the subject of Isra and Miraj, you need basar. You need to be able to see internally. Then Allah speaks about the stars in the sky and he says, وَلَقَدْ زَيَّنَ السَّمَاءَ الدُّنْيَا بِمَصَابِ He refers to them as lamps. A lamp provides light with which you can see the direction in which to go. And so this, the stars 
uh, like lamps to show you direction in which to go. So to the verses of the Quran. The verses of the Quran are like lamps to give you light with which to see. The problem is that sometimes the lamp gives only a little bit of light. Because Yahdi Allahu li nurihi man yasha. Allah gives his nur to whomsoever Allah chooses. And you may have only a little bit of nur. And when you read a verse of the Quran with this little bit of nur, you get this much of knowledge from it. But another day, when Allah is pleased with his servant and bestows more nur, the lamp will shine brighter. And the same verse of the Quran, you will now study it and you get so much more. So much more. So Washington, you could take that and put it in your pipe. Washington, you can take that and put it in your pipe and smoke it. Washington, you will never be able to penetrate this Quran. You get only the surface meaning. Only those who are blessed by Allah and who get a lamp which is shining bright in their hearts, only they will be able to penetrate the Quran and get all that the Quran has to offer. And what the Quran has to offer is inexhaustible. No one can possibly exhaust the knowledge of the Quran. And so with this brief methodology, brief statement on methodology, please read this book, Methodology for the Study of the Quran. We go now to this verse of the Quran in Surah Al-Isra, in which Allah says, Subhanallahi asra bi abdihi laylam min al-masjid al-harami ila al-masjid al-aqsa al-lazhi barakna hawla. Glory be to him, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who took his servant by night time from this masjid, the masjid al-haram, the sacred masjid, to that masjid, masjid al-aqsa, al-lazhi barakna hawla. That masjid is different from this one. That one is blessed and blessed and blessed and blessed. This one was not blessed that much. What is the blessing? Allahi barakna hawla. That's the first question that has to be answered. In what way was that one blessed? So much blessing. And this one did not get that blessing. The answer is Ibrahim alayhi salam. Abraham takes the baby and the mother and left them there in that barren valley. Mm -hmm. Left them there because Allah ordered him to do that. And after he had left them there, and when they could no longer see him, he turned the camel back to that barren valley. The mother, Hajar, alayhi salam, and the baby, Ismail, alayhi salam, is there. And he prays to Allah, and he asks Allah to take care of them, provide for them food, and grant that one prophet may come from amongst them. He asks for only one, from Ismail, only one. And that came with Muhammad, alayhi salatu wasalam. The prophet said, he said, the best of those who came from Ismail, alayhi salam, was the Kinana. And the best of those who came from the Kinana were the Quraysh. And the best of the Quraysh were Banu Hashim. And I am the best of Banu Hashim. So a direct line between Muhammad, alayhi salatu wasalam, and Ismail, alayhi salam, the son of Abraham, Ibrahim, alayhi salam. So this masjid gets only one. After Ibrahim alayhi salam, Abraham and Ismail alayhi salam, Ishmael, this masjid gets only one, Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam. But that masjid, that masjid gets one after another, after another, after another, continuously. From the time that masjid was established, that is what, that masjid was blessed. This was not blessed in that way. 
And Allah is sending his messenger to that masjid, which was blessed and blessed and blessed with all these prophets who were sent to the Jews, sent to Banu Israel, including the last one of all, the son of the Virgin Mary, Nabi Islam, Jesus. And he's sending him there to show him some of our signs. Obviously, the signs have to be connected with this subject. When will we think? You know, the smartphone is taking up a lot of our time. But I don't have a smartphone. I think I'm a little bit smart here, you know. I don't have a smartphone and I don't want one. I know what it'll do. It'll eat up the time that I have, the little time I have for reciting the Quran in Arabic every day to try to complete the whole Quran once every lunar month. This smartphone will eat up my time. In addition to that, it'll destroy my capacity to think, which is what television does. Obviously, the signs of Isra and Miraj have to be connected with the Jews, have to be connected with the prophets who were sent to the Jews, have to be connected with the last one of all who was sent to the Jews, to Banu Israel, the son of the Virgin Mary. And then when Allah says that he took him, innahu samil basir, He's the one who hears, he's the one who sees all things. And Allah took him up into the Samawat. And there, remember the, the tree, uh, the low tree, and is Yagsha Sidrata Ma Yagsha. The tree is shrouded with what it was shrouded. And he is gazing at the tree, Ma Zagal Basar, Wa Ma Taga. His gaze did not waver, did not tire. Laqad Ra'a. Min ayati rabbihi al-kubra. Laqad ra'a min ayati rabbihi al-kubra. He surely saw the greatest of the signs of Allah. And I have a question to ask. And you have a question to ask as well. Yes, indeed. This is the most important question of all in the subject of Isra and Miraj, but we never hear it being questioned. All that we hear is we came back from Isra and Miraj and he brought back the five daily salat. That's all we hear. From the time I was a child going to the masjid, and you know when the time of Isra and Miraj come, we are very excited because there's a suite called Malida. You don't know about it in Algeria, don't know about it in Malaysia and so on. But here in Trinidad, we have a sweet called Malida. It's made from flour and, and oil and sugar and so on. And we know that when the time of Isra and Miraj comes, when the program is over, they're going to be sharing Malida. And we love to have the Malida. I don't know where it has disappeared now. I wish you can bring it back, Malida. So we were very happy at that time. And we listen to the story of Isra and Miraj every year, every year, every year. And we know when he came back, he came back with only this, the five daily salat. But no, no, no. He came back with much, 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 much more than that. He came back with the greatest of the signs of Allah, connected with the Jews connected with Banu Israel, connected with Jerusalem, connected with Masjid Al-Aqsa. And this is the most important question of all. What did he see? What were the signs of Allah that he saw that Allah described as the greatest of them all? And in order for him to see these signs, Allah had to take him on that journey that miraculous journey from Masjid al-Haram in Makkah to Masjid